What's up friends? Welcome back to another video. My name's Alex and this is my channel Pups and Paperbacks where I talk about writing, I make YouTube trends bookish, and I also create themed book recommendations. And today I am taking Judy Bloom's Masterclass. My friend approached me and talked to me about Masterclass and the guest pass. So I decided to make a video out of it. So over the next seven days, I am going to be taking Judy Bloom's writing class and I will bring you with me and do a short review. So if you're new to my channel, I'm a YA contemporary writer with a focus on writing trans own voices stories. And I'm currently revising my hockey novel, which was my NaNoWriMo project in 2019. And last month I did revisions and I'm 26,000 words into revisions. And if you would like to see all of my Camp NaNoWriMo writing vlogs, the playlist will be up here. And at the beginning of the year, I set out to write a high school musical retelling with a trans boy as the main character. And you can also see my writing vlogs for that. I'll have all the links down below or in the cards. I have a lot of writing content. And so if you're interested, definitely go and watch more. But today I am going to start the first course of the masterclass and bring you with me. <laughs> Sunday and the masterclass is almost over. I think I have like 20 minutes left. I've been writing in my Charlie Brown notebook. My other notebook filled up so I am using my Charlie Brown notebook to write some notes and I've gotten a lot of like brainstorming done of things that I can add and I have a whole page on Judy Bloom. But my favorite thing that she has said so far is to always listen to people around you. I thought that was a really good tip and something I don't think to do. I have done this a little bit in the past where I've been like, oh, I hear something and I'm like, oh, that would be a good line for one of my characters to say. But I've never really felt like it was justifiable because I'm kind of taking other people's words and putting them in a book said by someone else. But when she talks about it, it's a little bit different than what I originally thought because when she first said it, I was like, what? Like, that's weird. But she says to really listen to your surroundings. And so I actually did that. I went on a walk. I went to Starbucks actually first to do some work. And then I went over to a shopping center that was nearby. I went over to Five Below to get some things and I was just listening and looking to see what was around me and what was happening, which was nice because I didn't bring my headphones and that's what I usually do. But I tried it out. I did end up walking past a PetSmart and there was a little girl in a cart and her mom was pushing her and there was also a dog bed. So I was thinking like that could totally be a flashback because in my high school musical retelling there is a dog which I just keep forgetting to put in but I thought maybe that would be a good thing. Not that I am ever going to use it but I think it's a good exercise to do even if you're not going to be using this stuff but she talks about how that has actually worked for her and a lot of her stories have stemmed from things in real life and I thought that was pretty cool and I just like listening to how a lot of her books came to be. That's something that I love to hear when I'm reading a book. I love author's notes because I love to just know why someone wrote a book 
and I'm always looking up interviews and stuff just to really find out why someone wrote a book. It's just my biggest interest when I'm reading something or watching something. So I really like learning why a lot of her books were written. I just really enjoyed learning how her books came to be and just what her mind is like. It was really cool. She also gives another really good tip which is letters. And this gave me such a good idea for a story I want to work on in the future. It's like a college age story and it just made me think about a letter format because that is one of my favorite tropes. So her tip was to write letters or have your character write a letter to find inner dialogue. And I thought that was awesome but not something that I need at the moment, but I thought it was a really good tip and definitely something I'm going to use for my future books. She talks about writing younger characters and trying to approach a younger audience and I really enjoyed that and that was the main reason I picked her. The main reason I picked her was because she talks about young readers and how to write for young readers and I am writing for young readers so that's what I need to know and I didn't see anyone else who was writing for young adults so I just ended up going with her because she's contemporary like me and she writes for young adults and she said to observe kids. <laughs> um, I thought that was a good tip. I mean I've worked in childcare for the majority of my life. I'm not working there at the moment but I have worked there a lot and I don't know if I would go with this. I do want to write a middle grade at some point in my life. I have a really good idea but I need to focus on the books that I'm working on now but I do have a middle grade idea and so I wanted to hear a little bit about her advice for writing middle grade and she says to observe kids and also try and remember some of your childhood which was hard for me because I don't really remember a lot of it. So her advice was to reflect on your childhood and also observe kids. I think that's a good tip um, but I think you can do it in a way that it's not creepy I guess. Um, I have worked in childcare for like 10 years but I'm not currently working in childcare but I think that's a really good idea especially like if you're babysitting or you just no young kids I think that would be a really good idea. For me I think it would be a good idea to observe teens just because that's my demographic and that is what most of the characters in my book are. I think once ice sports start and like school and hockey leagues start I am going to go to some of the arenas and see if I can watch some games because I think that that would really help me because I am really struggling figuring out what high school hockey is like. I've never played hockey. I'm just a fan of it and I just know a lot about it. So I think that that would be a really good idea for me to do. So observing was a really good tip that I got from her. I can't remember if I said this already but I sent a paragraph over to one of my friends because I was stuck and wasn't sure what was really happening or if anything made sense. So I sent it over to them and they said that I tell more than I show. So I'm really learning to balance that out because I write in third person. It's a little bit harder but as I'm revising I'm realizing how much that's happening. <laughs> but it's helping me so much to revise now and revising is way more easier because now I can actually fix things and then when I go into my third draft I'm going to have to fix things again. So that was a good tip and that is also one of Judy's tips which, which is to show don't tell. In my notes I have show over tell. Um, she also talks about agents and editors and I thought that was a really good tip. Um, she said find agents of your favorite books which was really good and I think that's something that I'll start doing in the future. I ended up looking up whose agent was for Isaac Fitzsimons and I ended up finding an anthology that's coming out next year which is Game On and I'll have a link for it down below. I'm so excited and will be wishing for that arc. I will do anything to get my hands on that because it is a perfect anthology for me. It is a sports anthology and I am so excited because it has a lot of the same authors from Up All Night and I have a whole reading vlog of that where I read the book every night for a week so that will be up here if you'd like to go and watch it. 
Um, she also doesn't follow themes and I'm a lot like that as well. I, when I reread my book, I realized that I do have a theme, but I'm not going to reveal it, but I do have a theme and I didn't realize that because I thought like, oh, I probably don't, but I think it just happens naturally. Like she does talk about that as well as that like you don't always know what your characters are going to do and that is so true. And her last really good tip was to read it out loud, to just read your book out loud, which I know my friend Brittany has done. Brittany said she put the text to speech on and that's how she read through her book out loud and I think I'll definitely do that one as well. So I really enjoyed she said that you can just use said, like you don't have to always use a different word like if said works in that scenario just do said like it doesn't really have to be like a prestigious word especially since you are writing for kids but I thought that that was a really good tip and last is to flip through books and I do that anyway but she said like if you're stuck on something just flip through one of your favorite YA contemporary books and see how another author has done it and I thought that was a really good tip and that is basically it. I thought it was a really good masterclass. I have 20 minutes left so once I have finished it completely I'll let you know but let's talk a little bit about how my revisions are going. I revised 1700 words yesterday and my total is almost at 4000 and I am hoping to hopefully finish by September because I have other goals in mind but I'm not going to reveal them until maybe the end of the year but I do have some other goals and I just kind of want to crack down more on like getting this one done and once I'm finished with breaking the ice then I can go on to the start of something new but I'm going to focus on breaking the ice for the rest of the year and try and get myself into actually having it actually done so I'll probably work on it as well for NaNoWriMo um, because I really just want to have a full finished manuscript of it that's my main goal at the moment so that's the book I'm going to be focusing on and that is it for revisions I'm really having a lot of fun I just get into some mindsets where I want to write and others where I want to read and that's totally fine but right now all I want to do is write so I'm going to finish the master class and I will be back later Later. Hello, I am filming this clip probably like a half hour before this video goes up because I had a busy end of the month and did not update at all. So let's just get into it really quickly. I finished the master class. It was really good. The clips that you saw are my full review. She really didn't talk about much after except that she opened a bookstore which I thought was really cool and basically she said she doesn't think she's going to write anything else and I think she had a good career so good for her. I went to California for the last week of I went to San Francisco and Los Angeles for the end of August so I did not get a lot of writing done but my final total of the month was 9,016 words so still pretty good and I have 42,551 to go. I was thinking that I might want to try and set a goal to get my revisions done by October 1st. September is a little bit busy because I'm hosting a readathon. The link will be up here if you missed it but I'm hosting a readathon and I do have a lot going on this month with my job and just with a lot of life stuff. If you follow me on Instagram, I've just been not having the best time. Um, unfortunately, my cat Luna passed away 
And so I don't know what I'm going to do because I literally have a cat in my book. So I'm just really going through it right now. So I don't know what's going to happen. I also started Six Angry Girls, which was for research, but also for a video because I'm doing a recommendations video, but I want to read a lot of the books. So I know I'm giving a good recommendation. Um, but this I read because there is a character who has a broken leg, just like my character. But it wasn't really useful for me because this character does not use crutches. My character does. This character uses a scooter instead. So that just did not help me at all. So if you do have any recommendations for books that do have a character with crutches and it's written well, please leave them in the comments because I'm looking for them. I'm desperate, but in terms of books, this is really good. So I'm enjoying it, but that's for another video. So that was my August writing vlog and taking Judy Bloom's masterclass. Let me know if you've taken it or if you've taken any masterclasses and if any of the tips that she gave will help you or if you use them as well, let me know in the comments. And if you are new here, let me know what you are writing and what you're working on. Every Wednesday here on this channel at 7 p.m. Eastern time, I always host productivity sprints and writing sprints. I will have a schedule posted. I don't think I'm going to do them next week, but I will be doing them for the week of the Slapshot Readathon. So maybe that's when I'll just start them back up because like I said, I have a lot going on and I just kind of want to take things easy for If you're new here, hit subscribe. I am starting out posting writing content at the end of every month. So look out for that. I have a lot of playlists on writing vlogs and just writing videos. I posted a tag recently where I talk all about my hockey books. So if you want to know more about that, you can go and watch that video. Thank you all for watching. I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me there for one dollar. Until September 16th, I am giving away a bookmark. If you become a patron, you will receive a laminated bookmark and also a personalized handwritten letter from me. So go over and do that if you can. I would really appreciate it. It really helps support my channel, but you can also subscribe and like this video if you want to show me some support. It really helps out my channel. And that is it for today. And I will see you on Monday with my first vlog of vacation. Bye. Mm -hmm.